Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sobatik, and today we are going to talk about the Delaware jacket and our batik canvas. The Delaware jacket is a new pattern by Itch to Stitch and I absolutely love it. The minute I got the announcement from Kenna that they had launched another pattern, I just fell in love with this jacket. And I'll put a picture up so you can see this really, really close up. The style of the jacket is a relaxed spring unlined jacket, and it's wonderful. The collar is a stand-up collar, long sleeve with a button closure, we have our zipper and we have the option of putting four pockets on the outside of your jacket. I simply put two pockets and they each have a flap closure with a button. I did not put the pockets on the top. I just wanted the two pockets down below. And then it has this really, really fun detail where it adds a little bit of gathering around your waistline and that's achieved by an a cord that is running through a casing all the way along the waistline of the jacket. And so we have two cord stops keeping that in place. And you can adjust those, of course. I love these cord stops. You can um, either use a buttonhole for the opening to the cord, or if you are a grommet person, you can also add grommets as the cord opening as well. So that's the jacket. It's really, really fun to sew. And as usual, the pattern itself is wonderfully written, wonderfully illustrated, and I love it. Let's talk a little bit about the pattern besides what I just kind of talked about, which is you're going to need the zipper, the cording, the cord locks, a fun little label to put in the center back if you would like, and you'll need interfacing, and you'll need six buttons if you're going to put all four pockets plus your buttons on your cuff. I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else. A couple things to think about. I'm going to jump and talk a little bit about the batik canvas for just a minute. Kenna wrote this pattern to be an unlined spring jacket. It's written for woven fabric, kind of a lighter to mid-weight woven fabric. I was going to actually use our linen because I'm kind of in a linen fetish right now, but I decided to use the canvas. I selected the five ounce canvas, and I really love how this turned out. It's just the right weight for this style of jacket. Now, what we need to talk about is the size that we select to make. And the reason I'm bringing that up is that the canvas itself is, there's no stretch to it. It is a very tight weave as a canvas would be. If we were working with our linen as an example of something a little bit different, there is a little bit of movement in a linen because it doesn't have that tight weave to it. Normally with an itch to stitch pattern, I will be printing the size range from a 10 to a 14 or a 16. I started on this pattern with a 10 at my shoulders and a 14 at the hip. The ease on this pattern is about four inches or so. I was sort of taking that into consideration when I decided on the size I was going to make this jacket, but I didn't give enough thought to the tightness of the weave of the canvas versus a linen. So I would strongly recommend going up one size if you're going to use a fabric like our canvas that has very little movement to it at all because of the four inches of ease, it's really not a lot when you're working with a jacket. Now, everybody's personal preferences, take those into consideration, of course, but I am not wearing a long sleeve top. I'm wearing a short sleeve top 
it's actually an itch to stitch top to I have to remember the name of it, but <laughs> but I'm wearing a jersey knit top, but it's a short sleeve top. If I were wearing a long sleeve, this would be very uncomfortable, but yet the jacket is the right size. Next time I make this jacket out of canvas, I am going to size up one size because I really like a little bit more ease in a jacket. If this were a shirt, I think it would be perfect, but it's not, it is a jacket. If I'm going to make this out of linen in the future, or batik linen, I will make it the size I made it because it, it has a little bit of movement inherent in the weave of the linen itself to have a little bit more give and drape differently and all of that. So I will take that into consideration. I'd like to talk a little bit about interfacing. We do need interfacing in the collar the cuff and the pocket flaps and the top of the pockets. I did not intend to put any interfacing in the canvas version of this top of this jacket, but I did end up going back and adding interfacing. The collar itself does have interfacing in it, so it gives it that really uh, an extra stand to it, which I think is very, very good. I did not put interfacing in the cuff which is fine because it doesn't need to be stiff at all. I did go back and interface the pockets because if I have anything heavy in my pocket, I wanna just make sure that nothing sags, that it is a nice structure to it. So I did put interfacing back in that. So when we put together our fabric packs for this kit, I will include interfacing with our canvas. The pattern is written for multiple cup sizes and for multiple sizes from a 00 to a 40. I love all of the options and how everything is laid out in her pattern to be able to decide what size ranges I need if I need to grade my pattern. And I typically do. I'd like to show you each one of the pattern pieces so that you can kind of see how this pattern is put together. going to jump over here, find the front. This is the front pattern piece. So we have our drawstring case markings, we have our pocket markings, we have our dart, and it has a very, very nice shape to it. The back pattern piece, our neckline, our shoulder, and our sleeve. Again, a nice simple shape, and it is placed on the fold. And there's also, of course, our drawstring case placement lines. The sleeve is made up of two different pattern pieces. So we have an upper sleeve and we have our under sleeve. Of course, with the notches below to allow us to simply make a beautiful cuff. And then we have all the smaller pieces. We have our cuff. We have our collar piece, and then we have all of the pockets. So we have two different size pockets. We have the larger piece and their matching flaps. And the only other piece I don't have sitting here is the piece for the casing itself. Food for thought about the sizes that you cut out, okay? And I'm only mentioning this because I do grade my sizes from a 10 to a 14. What I do, and I'm just going to use the back as my example. I have a 10 at the shoulders and the arms. So my sleeve is cut as a 10. So all of those pattern pieces and the cuff are cut as a size 10. Then I grade down through a 12 to a 14, a 12 at the waist, and then down to a 14 at the hip. The reason I'm saying this is that the casing, which is very important in this jacket, I cut that pattern piece out as a 12 because that was the grade that I had with my jacket. Now the pockets, the pockets are also sized into size ranges. However, make the pocket whatever size you would like your pocket to be. 
I made mine to be the same size of the hip of my garment, just to try to keep things in proportion. So take that into consideration as well. I don't think I need to mention anything other than that. The collar, of course, is also a size 10 because the top of my garment is a size 10. So just making sure everything matches with the notches and the sizing, that's what I always have to make sure that I'm doing. There are a couple of steps in the construction of this garment that I did take a little bit of time to do a step-by-step -step through. So let's jump to some of those portions now. We're at the place in the Delaware jacket construction where we're going to attach the casing for our tie. And I've jumped to this place because the first steps of this jacket are very basic. We've added fusing to the front edge of our front two pieces. We've edge finished the shoulder, the side seam, and the bottom edge of all three pieces, the two fronts and the back. We've sewn our darts, and also we've sewn the side seams together, the back and the two fronts. That's all we've done. Well, and then we've prepped our casing, but we have not, as you can see, we have not sewn the shoulder together for one reason. It is super simple to add a casing to the inside of your jacket when the shoulders are not sewn. So we'll do that in a later step. But what I wanted to show you is the steps that I took to add the casing. Now, on the pattern pieces themselves, it is a good practice to always mark everything before you move your pattern piece away from your fabric. When it comes to pocket placement, and in this case, the drawstring case placement, I actually don't mark those simply because I'm typically using either an iron, you know, the, the iron will, once I press it with an iron, it just uh, melts it away or I'm using a chalk and I get it everywhere. So when it comes to a casing and a pocket, I wait. I am going to take my pattern piece and fold it along my drawstring placement line. And this is for the center back. And I have clipped the bottom edge of the center back just to know where to set my pattern piece. So I'm gonna line that up all the way across. And this will be my line for where I want to set my casing, okay? So I'm going to trace across this line. Make sure that the curve is in place. And I'll do the same thing for the other side. However, I need to fold this up so I can see exactly where the bottom hem of the jacket is and how it's going to curve because it will curve on you and trace that as well. Okay. So we want to make sure that we have our casing and I want to double check this other side because I don't think I did this right. It needs to make sure. Yep. It's just a little bit off. So I want to make sure that it curves just a little bit more and that'll be the top edge of the casing. And we'll do the same thing, I'm gonna reach over here for the two front portions of our garment. And so I'm just gonna fold this right along the top casing line. I'm gonna start here. And this I need to make sure I am at the right curve. And line this up. There we are. Double check to make sure this is correct. And I graded mine. So that's the line I'm attempting to follow is I, I, graded it. Now that is the one thing that I should mention right here too, that makes sure that when, if you did grade your pattern, for example, mine is graded from an eight, no, from a 10 to a 14. 
in the middle, I marked that this must be a 12. So I know that my casing is going to sit right at my waist. So this piece here, I cut as a 12 to make sure that it would fit properly. The other thing is the casing itself has a notch where it should match up to our side seams. And since we've already pressed this under a half an inch on either long edge, I want to make sure that I can still see where that notch is. And so I made a mark right across there so I know where that notch is. I'm going to grab some pins and we're going to pin this in place following that top line. I'm just going to put a couple of pins right now so you can kind of see where I am headed with this. Make sure that notch fits right in there. and then all the way across. Now, depending on what thread you have in your sewing machine and how comfortable you are top stitching, I am going to be top stitching right on the wrong side of this garment. My bobbin thread is going to show on the outside of the garment. Your choice on how you would like to do that the other thing that I could do on this particular casing is we can use, and this is actually a really good way to do this as well, we can use double-sided basting tape. This is a tape that I use, oh gosh, I use it all the time when I'm working on handbags. It's a great way to stick a, um, a strap on and then you can top stitch over it when it's difficult to work around pins or clips. As an example, if I was going to use this, you take a little bit of this double-sided tape and it sticks, let me tell you, it really sticks. You can put it on the back right here, press it in place, take off the paper And you, as you can see, well, you probably can't see it very easily, but it's just a clear piece of double-sided tape. Once you have this in the right place, you can position that down in place. Just press it in place. I'm not gonna do that right now because I wanna make sure that everything is lined up here before I do that. The double-sided tape really is a great way to put this in place, remove all of your pins, it saves you some hand basting time if you wanted to hand baste it. And then top stitch along the outer edge here and the lower edge here. And we're done with our casing and we're ready to string it once we get to that point in the garment construction. I'm at the point right now in constructing the Delaware jacket where I've attached one of the sleeves. I have the cuff attached. I haven't yet put the buttonhole nor the button on it. I am not really happy with the buttons that I have, so I might change those out. I want to make sure that I make the buttonhole the right size, so I'm just going to hold off on that for just a moment. But I want to take you through a quick little step-by-step -step and overview of how to prepare the sleeve and attach it to the jacket. Jacket sleeve is made up of two different pieces. I'm going to lay those out here. We have the upper sleeve and an under sleeve. The two separate pieces really give it a nice shape. And then we also have the cuff. You'll see that I've already prepared the cuff. We will uh, go through this in a minute, but um, I just wanted to do that when I was making the other cuff at the same time. The first step is to take both of your sleeve pieces and finish off the straight edge of both of these pieces. So whether or not you're using your serger to overlock them or you have a zigzag stitch or even if you're just simply using a pinking shears, it's whatever you want to do. Try to keep as much of the fabric intact as possible. So for example, when I went to my serger, I locked the knife away so that it wouldn't cut any of the fabric off. And so I just ran the four thread overlock right against the edge. Our first step will be to attach 
the under sleeve portion to the upper sleeve portion. So we're going to, with right sides together, I'm going to flip this over, match our edges and the notches right there, all the way down to the notch down in the bottom here. Hopefully you've marked your dots both up at the top and down below. Make sure that those are matching. And then with a half inch seam allowance, stitch all the way down to this lower dot, back stitch slightly, and then change your setting on your sewing machine to a basting stitch, the largest stitch you have, and then complete stitching all the way to this bottom knot. Next, we need to press the seam open. And I did this just a little bit earlier, but we're gonna press that open. And then down here on the notches, what we need to do is take the shorter of the two, which is our upper sleeve, and press that under. Basically, it's the seam allowance. So press that under a half an inch. And then the wider one, which is in the under piece, flip that over twice. Okay. And press that open. Next, I'm going to turn this around. I'm gonna press this, you can almost finger press it now, but press this away from the under sleeve piece towards the larger of the two pieces. And I am just going to quickly do a quick little press to make sure that that stays in place. What you're really doing is sealing the seam line now what I'm going to do is take this over to my serger and I'm going to serge right along this edge, sealing the two pieces together. I'm going to set my serger needles right at this spot where the notches end and then serge all the way to the end. I find that to be the easiest way to finish off this edge. If you have a zigzag stitch or an overlock stitch on your sewing machine, that is perfect. The next thing we're going to do is remove our basting thread. I don't think I have my seam ripper here, so I'm just going to use my scissor, get rid of my basting threads. Don't go too far, we wanna just go up to the dots, there we go. And I did back stitch, stitch just a little bit right there so that no additional threads will um, open. We're going to top stitch right along. I don't know if you can see this or not. Hopefully you can. We're going to top stitch right along the outside edge of this facing. And then we're going to top stitch, opening this away from the other fabric top stitch right along the outer fold of the under sleeve portion. Looks really, really great. So next what we want to do is create a little bit of a really tight zigzag stitch going right across the top here. And basically what we're trying to do is on the underside, we have a raw edge. We want to seal off that raw edge and really create a nice decorative look on the front side, the right side of the garment. And so the easiest way to do that is a really, really, really tight zigzag going across. What I'm going to do here is place a pin. I'll get rid of it in a second, but I really want to make sure I know exactly where the center of that zigzag needs to be. Flip that over. I see my marking right there. And now what I'm gonna do is put a pin on this side, just so that I know exactly where to put my zigzag stitch. Set your zigzag to be quite tight, and it doesn't have to be very wide. It, you know, follow the instructions that are in Kenna's pattern. 
but do a tester just so that you're, you feel comfortable with how wide and, and how that's going to look before you stitch on your actual jacket. I don't know if you can see that or not, but just a simple black zigzag going across the end of that notch and it really secures any unfinished edges on the end of the sleeve here. So the next thing that we're going to do is with a wide basting stitch, stitch between your notches two rows of gathering stitch. Start an eighth of an inch away from the edge and then another quarter inch away from the edge and make sure that you leave tails so that you can pull the uh, gathering stitches once we attach the sleeve to the garment. You won't need very much of a gathering, but it still is definitely necessary just to get a really, really, really nice curve. Once that's done, it's time to stitch up our sleeve, pin your finished straight edges together, and then sew your half inch seam allowance along this edge, come back and press it open. The next step is to prepare your cuff. What you wanna do first is take one of the sides, press one long edge under a half an inch. And then with right sides together, sew the seam allowance, which is a half an inch, on the short edges and the other long edge. Trim your seams, clip your points, and then turn this right side out and you end up with a cuff that looks just like this. Next, with the wrong side of our sleeve out, we wanna place the cuff with the unfolded facing side touching the right side of our sleeve. I'm gonna clip that in place and then sort of just lay this cuff on the inside of the sleeve and clip the other edge. I use clips to do that just to kind of get it in place. Then I'm gonna come back and pin first I like to pin right along the seam line there to make sure that the seam stays flat because I know I'm going to be sewing starting here and going all the way around the inside of the cuff and then just gently add a few more pins to keep it in place if you like to use clips the whole way, that's fine too. Now, when you're sewing inside here, make sure that the fold stays away from your stitch line and that you don't catch the fold right as you start and right when you finish. And make sure that you're back stitching on either end. Let's turn the cuff out, sliding the seam inside the cuff. And press, actually I'm fiddling with this just a little bit too much, I think, but there we go. So you wanna make sure that the seam is inside the folded edge of the cuff and then we're going to press this in place. I'm just going to simply on the wrong side here I'm simply going to press this away and press it flat. The pattern instructions describe pinning our facing in place, turning this right side out and then top stitching all the way around the edges just to give it a really, really beautiful finish. What I actually do is I'm not good at pins on the wrong side of the fabric when I take this over to my sewing machine. I always use, you've seen me use this before, but this double-sided basting tape, I use this a lot. And this is one of those occasions where I think it is just a great helper. I just take a little piece of the basting fold this back and then I'm going to 
place this little piece right along inside that folded edge and we don't need much of this. I just want enough to keep the facing of the cuff in place. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this down again and just press it in place. And you can feel whether or not it's past the edge of the fold because we wanna catch this fold while we're top stitching on the right side. So I'm gonna put one more piece of basting right in this portion. And now I don't need to worry so much about pins. And this is a very flat sleeve cuff. If there was a little bit more detail or some gathering or something like that, it may make a difference. But with this amazingly flat cuff, there's really no reason not to use something like this basting. Okay, and now what we're going to do is turn this right side out and top stitch all the way around, both the inside, outside, and the two short edges. With all the top stitching done and everything lines up beautifully, the next thing to do before moving on to attaching the sleeve is to add your buttonhole and your button. Lining everything up, it's really a lot easier to do all of this before we attach the sleeve. But if you don't have your buttons, no problem. <laughs> the next step actually is to attach our sleeve. And so I'm gonna grab the garment and we're gonna turn this so that the right side of the garment is on the inside. Okay, and slide our sleeve, or however you want to do this. I just always slide it through. And we're going to pin this together in a couple of places. I start with the center on the underarm area, matching my seams. Put a pin right in the center to make sure that everything lines up. That looks pretty good. And then there's three notches on this garment. We have our back double notch. And then we have the front notch. And then there's also a mark on this, the top of the sleeve that matches our shoulder. Those are the first things that I pin together. And this has a very gentle gathering. So just pull the strings, your gathering threads, ever so slightly. You know, the bad thing about working on the actual garment here and not doing a demo is that everything matches. So you can't even really see. <laughs> any of the threads or anything that I'm working with here. And I apologize for that, but I think you'll get the idea of what we're attempting to do. Got to get that back thread away. There we go. And just slightly gather. And I think I have a little bit too much gathering here. I'm going to back some of this off just a little bit. Okay. Okay. And then I start up at the top of the shoulder area and then pin in a few places where I think it really is going to be kind of a, a curve because I want to keep the fabric in place as we stitch around. The other reason I do that is that if I need to let out any gathering, I can do that without having to start way up at the shoulder again and reduce any of the gathers. And then do the same thing over on the other side as well. Find your gathering stitches and then pull those. Now working from the center down again, I just pin these in place. I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine. I stitch with the garment face down on touching my, my feed dogs of my sewing machine and just work my way all the way around. And then what we're going to do is finish off the edges 
whatever way you would like to do that. I'm going to jump over to the serger and just really close. I'm going to just snip off just a little bit. I'm going to engage the knife again, just a little bit to clean up the edges and then finish it with a really nice four thread overlock. But you could zigzag this or you can just simply create a, a second stitch line, use a pinking shears to remove some excess fabric. And then we're going to press this towards our sleeve. I hope each one of those steps was informative and I just like to share a little bit of each garment's construction. Those steps seem to be the ones that for me needed to have a little bit of extra video to them. But if I miss something or you'd like to see another step, definitely write in the comments below. I can video a step for you, add it to another future video or edit this one and add it to that as well. So just let me know. I think the one thing that I learned from this jacket and actually from a lot of sewing that I've been doing recently is, and I know this is going to sound like an infomercial and it's not intended to be, but is the use of this basting tape. Maybe you guys have this in your stash of tools. I don't know, but I seem to not be able to live without this right now. Remember in the video when we were adding the casing for the inside cord or attaching a pocket top or the pocket itself? I use that basting tape in areas of garment construction where it says to put a pin flip it over and top stitch. Anywhere where I can remove a pin to really add a level of straightness or stability to garment construction, I use that basting tape all the time. And it doesn't gum up my needles or, or anything. It's something that I would highly recommend that you have and that you use for all of these little areas that can make your life a little bit easier instead of constantly using pins or clips. So we will have fabric packs on our website for the Delaware jacket. And of course, as always, there will be a link to the Itch to Stitch website for you to purchase and download your pattern. We are an affiliate with them. And I just love sharing all of her patterns because they're amazing patterns. Our kits will come with the fabric of your choice and it will be our five ounce canvas that we put our kits together with first. The interfacing, the cord locks, because you're going to need that. The zippers, the buttons and the cording will not be part of the kit just because it's so individual and you may or may not have those at home already. I selected just a few fabrics from our entire collection of five ounce canvas here just to share with you as what I think would be absolutely fun spring garments as well as some classic styles. You can see up here all of the pastels that we have in our collection and then we also have several light shades down here as well but you know there's nothing more classic than a solid black jacket you can add so much detail to a black jacket it, you can add a different color thread you could add really fun buttons basically anything to make it your own style i just wanted to share that just having the five ounce canvas in our tuxedo would be a beautiful, beautiful jacket. And making this even without any front pockets would be so stylish because the style of this jacket with the waist um, gathers is just, I just think it's beautiful. The tuxedo would be kind of a basic, like a, a no brainer jacket. The other classic look that I absolutely love, and I think you guys really love as well, is the animal skin in the colorway of charcoal. I just, this is just such a beautiful, beautiful jacket fabric that it's definitely something to consider as well. Now, if we're jumping right into spring, you know, 
I mentioned the pastels, but it really can be anything. It can be anything that really makes you feel happy and spring-like. And I, I wanted to share three different fabrics from our five ounce collection. And this is the flock together in the colorway of cerulean. And it really is a light blue with, it almost has that periwinkle feel to it, um, but it's really a beautiful shade. And I can see this with just a beautiful white denim, beautiful jacket. This is the fabric that I almost made my jacket out of, but I recently made um, a linen garment using the um, Phoenix Soft Serve, which is the colorway of this fabric. So I didn't wanna duplicate that colorway, but what a beautiful spring jacket this would make. And then I always have to share something that is kind of a turquoise -y blue shade. And this is the Phoenix in the colorway of Clifton Garden, which is absolutely gorgeous. I think I have too many garments out of this colorway right now. Um, so I couldn't do this one either, but this would make an absolutely gorgeous spring jacket. I have one other thing that I wanted to talk about today too, because I had another person the other day asking me like the differences in feel between our five ounce canvas and our eight ounce canvas. So I grabbed our jacket that we did a couple weeks ago. Let me grab it. Well, I think it's probably been a month ago now, but this is the this is the fabric that is the Valhalla motif in the shade of Lavender Lantern, okay? This jacket is from our eight ounce canvas and it is much stiffer. See, I mean, I can just, it's just really a stiff jacket. So make sure, and this is, goes to the point of having enough ease in your garment as well when you're making a jacket. This is a little bit oversized, this particular jacket, and I used the Simplicity 9239 pattern when I made this garment. This is on our website as well. But this looks like it's a linen, if you take a look at the pattern jacket. And I really wanted the heavyweight canvas. And so I did make the oversized version of it. It wears beautifully. It's a little bit heavier to wear, but again, if you were going to make this jacket out of this heavier weight canvas, I think you would have to definitely upsize it. Maybe think about how much drape you're going to get with the casing and the cording. So just give some of that some thought. I, I'm not gonna say that you shouldn't use the heavier canvas. I just think that for the purposes of a lighter weight spring jacket, I would stick with something that is five ounces of canvas or less, okay? but this was a fun canvas jacket to make as well. I really had a fun time sharing all the details about the Delaware jacket and working with our batik canvas. So hopefully this information comes in handy when you make your Delaware jacket, and you definitely should. If you are a garment sewist that loves jackets, this is definitely a jacket you should be making. Leave some comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And we hope you like this video. Have subscribed to our YouTube channel and follow us on all of our social media outlets as well. And definitely sign up for our e-newsletter so you can hear all about the new projects, our new fabrics, just what's going on here at Sew Boutique. So until next time, keep sewing, smiling, and sharing.